Welcome to August 17, 2017 Clackamas County Commission Board meeting and I'll call to order. Well, uh, good morning, uh, Commissioners. Of course, we're here at the uh, Clackamas County Fairgrounds and uh, we are joined this morning uh, by Mr. Stephen Madcor representing County Council's office and uh, Mary Rathke, our clerk of the board. I'll go ahead and start the roll. Uh, Commissioner Humberston? Here. Commissioner Fisher? Here. Commissioner Reynolds? Here. Commissioner Schrader? Here. Commissioner Savas? Here. Chair Bernard? Here. Please rise and join me in a Pledge of Allegiance of Vetra VFW. VFW Post 1324 will present the colors. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Well, first off, we're going to adjourn as the Board of County Commissioners and convene as the Housing Authority for the next item. Also, I'd like to introduce Housing Authority Commissioner Paul Reynolds down here. Thank you. And with that, uh, done. Okay, so uh, we need to read the uh, consent agenda. Yes, there's two items on the Housing Authority consent agenda. Resolution 1921, approving the Housing Authority certification for the Section 8 Management Assessment Program and approval of a professional contract for relocation services with DDV Consulting Services. Do, does any commissioner want to remove or pull an item from the consent agenda? See none. Is this the housing? Yes. yes. This one, this first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. Uh, so I'll entertain a motion. I move we approve the Housing Authority Consent Agenda. Second. We moved and seconded to approve the Housing Authority Consent Agenda. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Now we'll adjourn as a Housing Authority. Thank you, Paul. Have Thank a great you. weekend. Adjourn as a Housing Authority Board and reconvene as a Board of County Commissioners for the remainder of this meeting. With that, we have some presentations. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to uh, welcome the Executive Director of the Clackamas County Fair, Lori Bothwell, up to the microphone to uh, provide the welcome and to introduce the 4-H presentation. Good morning. Morning. Well, as Don said, I'm Lori Bothwell. I'm the executive director of the Clackamas County Fair, which is a true honor for me to do that. Um, it is five days of fun. What are those five days in my mind? Um, one is that families are traveling as far as Shanghai, China. Raylene met a lady who comes to the fair, our county fair from China, and we now start the rodeo. Number two is our wonderful rodeo. It's been almost sold out Tuesday and Wednesday night. Unbelievable. Great, great crowd, great show. The other is our Queen and Princess, Queen Amber and Princess Savannah. They've traveled over 5,000 miles. They're both new to a court. They're not returning members, and they've won major awards. This year they won the Vern Hewlett, they were runner-up for the Vern Hewlett Award, which is the highest honor you can get at the Rose Parade. And uh, they've helped us plant our beautiful trees out here. In the, in the road, if you've seen them, we have dogwood and myrtle crepe that's blooming now, which was a community effort to have a beautification in our parking lots. Um, the other is, 
the volunteer effort that we have at the county fair. This year we're asking each volunteer to sign a form and let us know how many hours they're serving us, whether it be the week of the fair or all the things that lead up to the county fair. And I'm excited to give you that number in the future when we meet again. It's going to be unbelievable. Uh, the numbers of some that I've seen so far have been up to 200, 800 hours, and that's phenomenal. It's going to be a wonderful community gathering of our volunteers and knowing that. The other thing I'd like to do is recognize, um, I have two fair board members in the audience today. I have Raylene K. Meyer and Vice President Dan Sandberg. I have a wonderful time working with these wonderful board members whose heart and souls are about our county fair. And as we move to a better and better county fair and event center, I look forward to their vision and to um, serve them in the best way I can. Thank you so much for taking the time to come and be here. It's nice to see you every day at the fair. I know you're busy and it's nice working with you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. So now I'd like to introduce to you Wendy Hine. She is our Clackamas County, one of our Clackamas County 4-H Extension agents. She has some introductions for you. Thank you, Lori. And thank you for inviting us to the meeting again today. A hundred years ago this month, the first OSU Extension agent arrived in Clackamas County. She taught food safety and canning. A few months later, she was joined by an agriculture agent. And in 1918, the first 4-H clubs were organized. For 100 years, Clackamas County citizens looking to improve their lives have turned to the OSU Extension Service. They come to learn how to feed nutritious food to their families. They seek information on starting a business or on passing on a century farm to the next generation. They ask how they can improve the environment by removing invasive weeds and avoiding pesticides. <clears throat> they start 4-H at age five and leave at 18, transformed into young adults ready to lead change in our world. Can you imagine a county fair without food, livestock, or 4-H? Uh, we can't. <laughs> can you imagine Clackamas County without strong families, well-managed natural resources, or communities that work together to solve problems? Neither can we. And we are making plans now for the next 100 years of OSU Extension programs in Clackamas County. This year we had 592 4-Hers enter the county fair. We also had 208 youth at the horse fair and 22 at the dog fair held here in July. So that's nearly 800 total youth who came to the fair to show what they had learned throughout the year. We are grateful for the support from the Clackamas County Fair and Event Center and Lori that allows our youth to learn and grow at the county fair and at educational opportunities throughout the year. We had quite a few of our 4-H youth who wanted to talk to you today, and many of them have brought projects to show you. So we will um, start by bringing some of them up here. So I think we were going to start with the Irwin family. So we have Sarah Irwin, Hannah Irwin, and Katie Irwin. They, have, they brought their alpacas and several of their uh, exhibit hall items. Are alpacas the spitters? <laughs> they can, <laughs> but don't be mean. <laughs> um, and uh, so Katie here also, they baked you some cookies. The, this is a reprise oh, of some you. of the reserve champion cookies this week. Oh wow, cookies. thank you. Yes. is mainly an alpaca 4-H group, but we have since grown to include things from horticulture and art to food preservation and uh, wood science. So um, we have uh, done many different things and learned so much from this teamwork and uh, public speaking as well as uh, talking to people from all different uh, age groups. So um, some of the things that we did this year were uh, organic gardening, 
We have some uh, crocheted projects and um, we have some animal showmanship awards. Okay, is, let's see, is Ronnie Broadfoot still here? Or did her steer need to go back? Okay, uh, we were trying to get a steer up here, but he wasn't so sure about um, <laughs> all this. So, um, how about, uh, do we have, uh, how about Maria Meisenhelder? Hello, I'm Maria Meisenhelder, and I'm a senior in 4 H. This is a frillback pigeon known for its curly feathers. Um, I've been in 4 H and coming to this fair since I was six years old. Um, so I've kind of grown up here. This is one of my favorite activities of the year. And um, I just want to say I appreciate so much for what you guys do for the fair. Um, I will say, uh, I know you guys changed the parking prices a little bit, so it's been hard to invite some of my friends, but it's definitely been a really cool experience, and I want everybody to come and hang out here and have a great time. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. And how about uh, Grady? Grady Buswell? Looks like Grady. And Ben. Oh, Daniel. That's Daniel. Hi, I'm Grady Buswell, and this is Daniel and Seth. And this is Seth's first year, and it's mine and Daniel's third year. And we, Daniel and I, we like to um, do a lot of with our projects. And 4-H has helped me learn a lot of skills, like sewing. I've learned um, how to help other people by using my time. And I have, I actually, this year I did some gardening stuff, so it's pretty cool. This is an Indian fantail, and they're kind of known for, instead of most pigeons usually having like uh, 12 feathers, they have around 32. And I show sheep, goats, rabbits, guinea pigs, um, pigeons, and cats. And 4-H has turned, uh, has learned, or has teach me responsibility for my animals. And um, I really love it. So I have a question. So do you let that pigeon fly around? Will it come back to you? Indian fantails actually don't, can't fly. Uh, oh, they can't fly? Yeah. So you keep the cat, does yeah. like keep the cat uh, away from the pigeon? Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, a bird that can't fly. It's very common with the fancy pigeons. Some roll on the ground, some tumble from the air. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right. Ready to come up on stage. And um, how about Haven? Haven, are you ready? Hi, I'm Haven Russell. Um, I do goats and I do art in the exhibit hall. Um, and 4-H has taught me so much over the years. Like when you get dead last in goats, but the next year you come back stronger and you get ribbons. And it's uh, really grown me a lot. And in it, sometimes you learn how to fail with grace, but then also come back stronger and come back with more drive and um, more enthusiasm for what you're doing because it teaches you not to give up and to keep going forward with your projects. And I think it's really cool in our 4-H club, um, we not only do our own species, but each year we have a master showmanship clinic where you get to try out pigs, cows, animals I'm super uncomfortable with, and every sort of species. Um, 
And besides learning responsibility and hard work in 4-H, skills that aren't just good in livestock, 4-H provides a really beautiful community. Um, you know, a community that'll accept you, crazy hats and all, and that really becomes supportive when your goat's having, you know, vomiting and you don't know what to do, but you know exactly who to call, who will know. And even if it's someone you're not super uh, close with, you know that because they're in your club, they are there to help you. And so 4-H has not only taught me a lot, but it has given me some great friends and some very, very reliable community support. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I think maybe Beulah would like to talk next. Haven has uh, some goodie bags for you. Benny Beaver was here on Tuesday, and he left you some presents. Right. So your hat, are those eyes or horns? Oh, they're, they're eyes. eyes. They're they're eyes. eyes. <laughs> yes, his name is Sir Gerald. <laughs> Yeah, so I would like to speak a little bit um, and brag a little bit about Grady, who is just up here with his sheep. Uh, so he, like you said, he's been doing this for three years, and I have seen some incredible hard work. Um, when he came his first year, he was so eager to learn, and so he would come up and he would ask questions, He and it really gave... Uh, me a chance to see some of the older members in our club really step up as leaders. Uh, they were t teaching the younger kids how to shear. They were teaching them uh, good responsibility um, health-wise with the goats. And it was really cool to see. And then the amount of hours that he's spent with his sheep so that it behaves just right. Um, and he cleans it. He's very friendly with it. He also helps other members. He's cleaning other members' aisles. He's helping wash other members' animals. And so it just really brings us together as a club and teaches leadership and responsibility. And that eagerness to learn is so wonderful to see. He wants to learn about his species. He wants to learn about other people's species. Um, and so it's really cool to see that hard work and politeness. I also, something I really appreciate about 4-H um, is we have auction animals. So that sheep will be going to auction. I have a goat that's going to auction. And so it teaches from an early age money management. They sell their goat and they see that they're not keeping all that money that they sold from their goat. It has to go back to pay the grain that they spent into the goat. So they're, you know, their parents don't just buy everything for them. They're using this money to buy their next goat and to really create a business instead of just spending money. Uh, so they're looking at how much, and we do record books every year, so they see how much their feed costs, how much it costs for fencing, how much it costs to buy the feed pans and the halters and how much it goes into it and then at the end they see if they've made a profit or if they're in the hole and then when they are in the hole you look and you see what you need to do next year to change that. So from a very young age they're not taught that everything's handed to them. They have to work for the money they get and then they create a business from there so that they can buy another sheep next year and make you know profit that way. And so I just thought that was really cool that they're learning that from a young age um, and then also just the responsibility and hard work when you're caring for another life. And that's never taken lightly. These kids are waking up early on school days. They wake up an extra hour early sometimes so they can feed their animals, so they can check on them. When they're breeding and they're having babies, they're learning the miracle of life there. And they're spending countless hours always checking on their goats and checking on their sheep and, you know, whatever animal they have as they're pregnant. And then feeding the babies every two hours and making sure you know, to keep them alive through the night. And so it's just an incredible responsibility you have, but it teaches great life lessons, like the miracle of life and often death because that does happen with animals. There's diseases. And so they learn about that and they learn how to handle that, you know, with an animal and that helps them later on in life to be emotionally strong individuals. And so there's just a lot of life lessons that we've learned here, hard work, responsibility, leadership, and also I'd like to say it's a community that brings all sorts of people. So we have some kids that live in rural areas and raise cattle. And we've got others that live in the city and maybe just have a bunny or that will go out to a farm um, where maybe a 4-H leader has cattle and they will go to their house and feed them every day and learn about animals. So it really draws all kinds of people and we all have that similarity in common that we're raising animals. And so we're all there helping each other and we know what each person's going through. I'd like to say like when I'm in the barn, if someone's walking with an animal and it gets loose, I've had a total stranger come help me catch it, bring it to me, make sure that I've got it and that everything's taken care of. You know, these are people I don't even know, but they know the struggle and they, 
you know, everyone's coming along and helping each other there. So I've had a wonderful experience. This is my senior year, and I'm so happy that I've been a part of it. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. How about Jake? Jake brought his rabbit over today. Hi, um, I'm Jake. I've been doing 4-H for nine years. Um, I've been coming to fair ever since I was four years old. Um, I do almost everything. I do rabbits, sheep, goats, uh, I, oh, beef, almost everything really. 4-H um, has really taught me a lot. Like. Uh, to take care of your animals, and if you don't, you'll get in a lot of trouble for it. <laughs> Believe me, I've, I've gotten in trouble for that. <laughs> um, and uh, you just really need to take care of your animals, and it's taught me responsibilities and everything about it. Well, thank you. Right. Thank you. Um, and how about Rayanne Carlson? Is she close? Yes. All right, so one of the promotional billboards you might have seen for the fair is this question, what is a KV? So that will be one of the things Rayanne gets to answer for us. Hi, I'm Rayanne, and this is my KV pumpkin. And a KV is basically a guinea pig. <laughs> That's kind of my answer, I guess. And 4-H has taught me a lot over the two years that I've done it, complete, doing like goats and guinea pigs. And I do market goats and it teaches you that they might be really friendly and you get emotionally attached to them. <laughs> and <laughs> there could be market goats that are big jerks, and you're excited for them to leave. Excited for them to go away. I love that. But I think 4-H is a good thing for kids to do because it teaches you responsibility to feed your animals, go out every day, water your animals, and and it teaches you good money management, I guess. And that's all I really have to say about it. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. Um, how about Hannah Meisenhelder? Hi, I'm Hannah Meisenhelder. You saw my sister earlier. She had the frilly pigeon. And I have another Indian fantail. This one is white. And so I've been doing lots and lots of different 4-H projects, pigeons, poultry, hearth, uh, foods and nutrition, public speaking, several different things. And like my sister, I've been in 4-H since I was six, so I really have no idea what my life would be like without it. <laughs> and it's, it's really helped me. Public speaking has helped me be able to fight stage fright and things like that. Responsibility for my animals, just as like a lot of them have been talking about. I'm also in the Clackamas County 4-H Ambassador Team, which is a group of teenagers that focuses on community service and leadership. And we've done lots of different outreaches. We've gone to the Oregon City Farmers Market and lots of different things. We had the booth uh, um, Tuesday over at the fair to help promote OSU Extension Service. And it's really fun, and I especially love the leadership aspect of 4-H and how it helps you rise to the occasion and makes you stronger, and really the responsibility is a huge part of that. And I really am thankful for what 4-H has done in my life. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you, Anna. How about um, uh, Jessica and Jenny Varga? Hi, my name is Jessica Varga, and this is my second year in 4-H. I've really learned a lot, and um, all the kids are very supportive. I'm, I show beef. I'm doing a steer and a heifer this year, 
It just um, taught me so much. I was a really shy girl when I came here. I looked at all the teenage girls and I was like, oh my goodness, I'm really shy. Um, I'm homeschooled, so I'm not really in the public schools, and I don't really know how to. I didn't know how to interact with people. But um, my 4-H leader kids were really supportive, and I got to be vice president of my club, and uh, I've learned so much this year. Um, I started. I grew up on my grandpa's dairy farm, and I was around cattle. My dad started six years ago with our own cattle herd. And so coming into 4-H, learning about the body parts of a steer and learning how to show and be a good showman is really, um, like, when we go buy cattle, I learned so much from that. I'm doing other projects this year in crochet and art, and just the, it, um, how do you call it, the feedback from how your artwork is, is like, really great. Um, the fair is really fun. All the people that you meet um, talking to the public, like they don't even know about agriculture, is really fun. And I thank you guys for um, helping create a time for fair time because this is the, the funnest time in the year. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jennifer Varga. I'm her sister. And this is my second year in Beef 2. And I've learned so much from 4 H with like confidence skills and helping others and responsibilities and I love my beef and I have a heifer in steer this year. Um, there are um, setbacks in 4-H and stuff like that with your animals um, but you know you always have to get back up and you have to try harder next year and last year I wasn't doing so well in showmanship but surprisingly, if you practice more, you get better. So <laughs> I got first place in the first rotation of my showmanship as a senior, and then they brought all the other good people from the top classes, and I got fourth, but that was still much better than last year. <laughs> nice. And I want to thank you guys so much for being here and um, listening to all our, the stuff that we have to say, and it's very important to us. 4-H is really, really cool. Thank, thank you. you. So in Jenny also has some items she's going to bring you from our office, um, celebrating our 100th anniversary of OSU oh, Extension wow. in the county. Um, how about uh, Maddie, Maddie Engler? Thank you. Is your goat ready? Ready. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Nice swag this year. Hello. My <laughs> name is Maddie Engler, and um, I've been showing for three years. Um, I show rabbits as well, and what kind of got me started was that I used to come to the fair when I was maybe two or three, and I've been coming my entire life, and a few years ago I was just like, oh, I want to be that cool and um, show rabbits or do something with my animals, and so I got rabbits, and it was in the agreement that I would take care of them every day and I would show them and now I'm doing other things like goats and next year possibly sheep and so for it just taught me so much um, so like I guess I've always been on a farm so coming in and seeing all these people which I knew is city people, bad people, stay away from them now. Um, they, they came in and the little kids didn't know that goats wouldn't hurt them or rabbits, for the most part, won't bite. Mine are kind of vicious, but <laughs> that's just me. Um, they came in and I've had a wonderful time showing them that they, animals aren't mean, they can pet them, and it's just been, it's shown me that there's so many different people out there and not everyone's around livestock on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's what 4-H taught me. Hopefully next year I can learn even more with sheep and other projects. And thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Maddie. Um, how about Tyler? Tyler Calloway, come on up. Hi, I am uh, Tyler. This is my sixth year in 4-H, and I show beef cattle. And 4-H uh, in this fair has taught me a lot about uh, time management, 
because you have to know how long it's going to take you to get ready before you can go into the fair or the show ring so that you can show. And it's taught me a lot about work ethic and putting other things ahead of yourself. Like at the fair, we'll go down and feed our cows and wash them and put them in, make sure they're all happy before we go up and eat breakfast and things like that. So it's taught me a lot about that stuff. And like Beulah and others have said earlier, it's teaching you about business and how to run and be able to keep doing it, knowing that you can't spend this much money on this stuff or else you won't make it back. And so you can't do it again if you spend too much. It helps keep you contained, learn how to make a profit and give you good financial skills toward that. So 4-H has taught me a lot about time management and work ethic and also like giving back to your community. Because when I first started, my brother was before me, so I thought he was really cool and I wanted to do that. So that's how I kind of got into it. And the older kids would come down and help me learn how to fit, help me do all that stuff. And now I'm getting up to an age as my sixth year where I get to come back and now help all the newer kids. So it's helped teach me about giving back and that it's a continuous cycle of agriculture. So nice. that's what 4-H is taught. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, Tyler. And um, how about Kendra? Hi. Hi. So, my name is Kendra Gutridge, and 4-H um, has always been something that my family has been really deeply involved in. My great-grandma ran a geology 4-H club, and my great-grandpa um, ran a beef 4-H club, and he showed Herefords, and that's something he taught my grandmother, and that's something my grandfather did, and my dad's have has always been showing beef and dairy and anything he can get his hands on. My grandma stepped up and actually led a horse 4-H because she noticed the kids in her community all wanted to do something with horses, but there was no one around to teach them how. And I actually show beef. That's something I've always really loved, and it's so much fun, but it's also really hard, and I can acknowledge that because there's never a moment where I'm not tired, but there's also never a moment where I'm not learning, where I'm not growing. And I think it's one of the most rewarding experiences to be able to come to fair and see how the public interacts with the animals. And earlier, I saw a grandmother bringing her two little granddaughters, and they had ne never been to a county fair. And they got to see a cow-calf pair, a little calf nursing a cow. And the light in their eyes and like the joy that that brought them was so inspiring to me. And it makes me really sure of what, how much I love what I do. And it's just an incredible part of my life. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. How about, I think we have two more goats over here. I see Hannah Hathaway and we've got one more. Why don't you both come up? Where are they? Oh. You're doing okay. It's really interesting. Hi, I'm Emily Worth, and this is my third year in 4-H. I am a junior, and I show French Angora rabbits and uh, Nigerian dwarf dairy goats. This is Aurora. And 4-H um, has really brought me to be a better person in life. I feel like I know that I used to always think that, okay, my mom does this, so I have to do this too. But it's taught me that it's okay to be different than someone else, and it's okay to be your own character. Like, my grandma always did sewing, and my mom did sewing, but then I chose that I felt like I had to do that, but that I um, was taught that it's okay, and I wanted to do animals. So I'm the animal person in the family now, and... Um, it's really taught me to grow and that things always don't go your way and you have to be responsible and do have other things in life just than goofing off and um, having fun, that you have responsibilities like waking up at five in the morning to go feed your horse and um, animals and all that before um, yourself and you have other priorities before you. 
and um, I've always been thankful for the county fair because I've been here ever since I was born and um, I always went in and I would see all the animals and I'd say, oh, I love them and I always thought it was so cool that we, the people would be able to do that, but I never knew where they came from until I found out about 4-H and it really has shown me like that it can make you grow as a person. Like my first year in 4-H, I started out with reds in rabbits, then I went up to blue, and then this year um, I have gotten champions. And so it takes the practice and the, this you just can't take an animal and put it in a cage and when you get it out, expect it to act perfectly. And you have to put time and your effort into it. And so that's what 4-H has done for me. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Emily. Hello, my name is Hannah Hathaway. Um, I'm a senior in 4-H, and this is my goat, Molly. There you go. Sorry, I don't think you could hear me before. This is my goat, Molly. She's a Nigerian door. Um, she's a little cold today, so that's why she's wearing my sweater. Um, but I've been in 4-H for five years. And I can honestly say, these are probably then like the best five years of my life. 4-H has taught me so much about leadership and communication skills and responsibility and just so many amazing things. And I've met so many just absolutely wonderful people through 4-H. And like I've gotten to try so many different projects, like obviously animals, um, the hearth projects like photography and knitting, and also shooting sports. I was on the trap team for a couple of years. Um, and also I've been able to go to state events like um, summer conference and experience with citizenship. And also I'm really happy to say that this fall I'll be going to National 4-H Congress which, with um, five other people from Clackamas County and I'm really excited about to do that and go there and celebrate 4-H. Um, and also, just like I say, I love coming to County Fair and getting to show my animals and talking to people about them because it just it's so cool just to be able to share your knowledge and teach people just how awesome 4-H and, of course, animals are. Um, so I want to thank you guys for everything you do to make this County Fair awesome. Thank you. Yes. Jennifer? Hello, my name is Jennifer Kitchen, and I have been in 4-H for 10 years. And I started out with a clothing and fashion review, and at first, um, the first time I went out and modeled, I cried, because I did not know what I was doing, and I did not like it at all. But I have grown so much in 4-H, and I've become a really good modeler. And I also started with beef my first two years that I was a real 4-H'er. And I, that wasn't my favorite thing, but that was okay because I switched to goats. And 4-H just has so many possibilities because maybe beef animals are too big for little kids, but that's okay because they can show goats or sheep or rabbits. So there's so many choices. And also it teaches us so much responsibility because you have to think every morning when you get up, you can't just feed yourself. You also have to feed your animals. My dad always said to me, um, if you're hungry, that means they are too. So you have to take care of them first. And so I've just grown so much in 4-H and it's been such an important part of my life. When I was little, I always had to learn from the older kids and I didn't know everything and that was okay because they were there to help me. And now as I've gotten older, I've been able to do the same thing for them. I've been able to help younger kids and I've been able to sell some of my goats to younger kids and they get to show them for the first time this year and they are so excited about that. And that's really important to me to be able to give back to an organization that's helped me all of these years. And so it's really cool to see that. And the other really cool thing about 4-H is that there's no other organization like it. There's no organization where all of these kids can come together and they can practice their skills and compete against other members and have good sportsmanship and practice all of the skills of responsibility and money management. And every part of... 4-H from the hearth to the animals. There's so many different choices. And I have been so fortunate to be involved in this for 10 years. And even though it's my last year, I am going to miss every part of it. 
and I'm so glad that I've got to participate in all these years, and I'm going to miss it so much, even though I've got to participate in it for so long. So thank you so much for listening to all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, did I miss any of my 4-Hers who were waiting to talk? I think that was everyone on my list. Well, thank you so much for listening to them. Like I said, I, you know, I, I mentioned to a few people that this opportunity, and I got this call this morning. Okay, there's like a there's a lot of 4-Hers who want to talk to the commissioners. So, uh, so I really appreciate you um, spending the time listening to their citizen voices. They care very deeply about this county. I think you'll agree that our our future is in really good hands here. So. Um, again, and thank you, thank you from us. Um, we're looking forward to that next 100 years of extension. And um, if anyone wants to join 4-H, we are accepting new members this fall, age 5 to 18. We are always looking for adult volunteers. Contact the OSU Extension Office for more information. Thank you. Thank you. They should have a 4-H mentor program so that uh, people like me who uh, three years ago bought a, a couple of cows, which I'd never stood next to one before, I, to help me know what to do. Uh, so I'm learning all the time. And just like everybody else, you know, they cry for me when I walk outdoors, and so do the chickens. But, uh, you know, it, it'd be great if there was some sort of opportunity to mentor uh, people who move into communities like this. I moved to Camby and to maybe uh, have a youth come and help uh, folks like me, out, old guys like me out, figure out how to raise cattle when you've never seen one before. <laughs> Close uh, up. I, I, I hear you, you know. Um, well, a couple things. One is uh, if someone wanted that opportunity and sent me an email, I would run in our e-newsletter and see if there's any 4-H families nearby who uh, wanted to call. But Many of our extension programs um, are just that. They're 4-H for adults. We have publications, we have workshops, we have workshops about growing better Christmas trees, about canning salsa, um, and uh, 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 family farming business practices. Uh, so we do try and offer those things to adults in our community. We realize, yeah, not, not everyone got to go through 4-H and learn it all then. Um, so we are pleased to offer publications and workshops through our office for adults as well. Yeah. Great. Great. Thanks, Paul. I just want to say this is one of my most favorite meetings of the year. Um, it does give us a chance to showcase what um, uh, Clackamas County is really all about. Our, our roots are well-established roots in farming in the rural areas. I know that as the county grows and our metropolitan urban uh, part grows much faster than our rural, mm -hmm. Um, this is an opportunity to remind folks who we are, and um, that and it's good to see both you know, the leadership and, and people make the presentation, but it's also a, a great opportunity, again, to showcase uh, what we do, uh, what you all do here, and, uh, and who we are. So I love this. This is my, one of my favorite meetings of the year, so I'm just, <laughs> just grateful to be here today, and thanks for the for, for Absolutely. The, uh, yeah, and we, we enjoy it too. And so many of our 4-H projects are completely appropriate for urban areas. You heard them talk about their art and their cooking and their rabbits. Um, believe it or not, not everyone in 4-H does animals. There's at least a quarter of 4-Hers have no animals. It's totally okay. They just like the animals so much <laughs> and they love to bring them up and show them to you. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, next on the agenda is citizen communication, and uh, we'll start with William Gifford. Welcome, William. You have not been to a lot of our meetings communicating, so thank you for coming. I'm not going to try to make up for it now. <laughs> uh, Mr. President and Commissioners, my name is William Gifford, and I live in Oregon City. I wanted to give some kudos to the county. Uh, for the recent uh, activity and the cooperation with Oregon City in the construction of the, uh, the, home, the pods for the homeless veterans. Um, I think this is an amazing project. I think that it was brilliant. And if, and if people haven't seen the, uh, where those tresses came from, the Pickathon stage, um, there's great pictures. Just Google uh, Pickathon stage homeless pods and there's some great pictures about how that all happened. I, uh, I was very impressed with the whole idea. It's unfortunate that it happened as such a 
sudden windfall <laughs> that uh, there was some coordination that was needed to uh, to get the uh, uh, to get the coordination with the city policies. I testified last night at the city commission, and uh, it was voted unanimously that we uh, that we enact uh, that the city enact a temporary. Um, waiver of some of our uh, some of our building codes so that we can get those pods built. I think it's a great service to our veterans. It's a great service to homeless, and I think it's a great example of cooperation between city and county. And I look for a lot more of that. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Next up, last pool. <clears throat> Good morning, Les Poole. I live in Gladstone. Um, budget time was a couple of months ago, and the only issue that I got up and spoke about was the fair and 4-H. Of all the hundreds of millions of dollars that were on the table there, the reason I spoke about the fair is like, Paul, this is my favorite meeting and we want to keep it going. Um, you know, I've been thinking about in Clackamas County how when we have issues, we have concerns, we have the freedom to come down and spend three minutes and share them with the commission. Sometimes you don't hear what you want to hear, but the beauty of it is you get an opportunity to express yourself rather than going downtown and breaking things and tearing things up. We're a civil place in Clackamas County, and when I look at what I just saw with these children, kids, whatever you want to call them, I don't see anyone there that's going to be breaking things when they don't get their way. And, and I heard words like time management and fiscal responsibility. Um, I hope our next commissioners are coming from that group, and, and I mean it, like wow. Um, how many of those kids do you think are going to end up on drugs? There's a question we can all ponder. How many of those kids are going to end up on drugs? Best way to keep kids off drugs is give them something good to do. And uh, I'm just, just a big, big lover of 4-H and the fair. Some of you may know finances and, and the cost of running the fair is an issue. The costs go up. And we need to do everything we can to keep the fair going and keep it in the county's hands. This is a special place, and, uh, and it's a special county. So everybody, let's have some fun. And there is more bad food here than any place in town. Thank you. <laughs> I'd say it's great food, but maybe not, <laughs> not healthy food. But there is some healthy food, too. So, Harry Wise. Thank you. Good day. Um, I've never spoken before the Board of Commissioners. I have attended a meeting before, and it just happened to be at a county fair a year or two ago. So I really like you opening your meetings up at the county fair and that. I didn't even plan on speaking today, didn't come with anything in mind to speak about, but there's been something heavy on my heart, and when they gave the opportunity for public, I thought I'd and that has to do with historical preservation. And because of this thing that happened last weekend in Charlotte, which I believe was basically instigated on both sides from outside the community, I don't think that spoke of what the people in that community's feelings really were. That we are in danger in our society in this country of the way things were historically and having our history rewritten. We have a vast history in Oregon, in this county, and whether it's good, a lot of it's good, and I'm sure there's some that is bad, but you learn from the bad to be better people in that. And the Holocaust was, was a very terrible thing, and you couldn't imagine the Germans just Bulldozing, bulldozing down Auschwitz, could you? I mean, it's been such a teaching thing. I've never been there, but I've heard people that go there. It's such a moving and stirring thing. And there's a saying that those that forget the past are doomed to repeat it. And if these things are so horrible that 
the people are tearing these things down. Take them out and we forget about them. Then according to this adage, we're doomed to repeat it at some time in the future. So I would propose that you come up with some kind of policy that if someone is offended by a particular monument or something historical, that there's a means that it can be a teaching moment. Maybe there's a point of view that we're not seeing by that, that they can put something or a, an additional plaque or some website that they could go to where it can be a teaching moment that just eradicating and tearing down things is not the answer. Otherwise, I, I truly believe that somewhere, whether it's in our time or our children or grandchildren, um, we will be doomed to repeat the, the horrors that took place. That's Thank you very much. I'm, I'm kind of hesitant because a lot of times people can misconstrue a person's motives. And, and my sole motive, it, I'm not representing any group or anything. It's just my personal feelings. And I just hate the rewriting of something that had to, to cause some group or something's point of view to be overrun by what actually took place. Thank you. Eric? Hi, thanks for the opportunity to speak. And even though I'm wearing a uh, Republican T-shirt, uh, I speak for, I think, all of the county. You have an opportunity, I'm really uh, appreciative of that, to select a replacement for House District 38. And you have four candidates that you're going to be selecting from. Eric, can you talk closer? Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. thank you. Uh, and so you're going to have four candidates you're going to be selecting from. And, and my appeal to you and my request to you is that as you go through and interview these candidates, I would hope that you would indicate or, or discern from them and their comments whether or not they're going to not only represent House District 38, but they're also going to represent Clackamas County and the people of the state of Oregon, rather than just appealing and and uh, falling over and, and following the, uh, uh, in many cases, the radical left or some of the, um, what do I want to say, the, um, the people that, I was trying to think of the people that go in and, and uh, talk to the representatives and the senators, but that they would be uh, of their own mind and to keep that in mind as you go through and interview them. Do they, would, will they in fact represent our people, the whole people, not just Republicans, not just Democrats, but all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I, I wanted to announce that that meeting that you're going to have is on Wednesday, September 13th at 2.30 at the Lake Oswego Parks and Rec Recreation Building, and the public is welcome to attend. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. So the next item is the consent agenda, and I would request that the clerk read the consent agenda by okay. title only. The consent agenda under Health, Housing, and Human Services, approval of an application to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, Continuum of Care Program, Annual Renewal of Funds, approval of a cooperation agreement with Catholic Charities and Housing and Community Development Division for the Homeless Veteran Shelter Pre-Development Activities. Uh, also, approval of an intergovernmental subrecipient agreement with Clackamas Education Service District for focused child care networks. Under the Department of Transportation and Development, we have approval of the intergovernmental agreement with the City of Happy Valley regarding administration of the Joint Capital Improvement Plan area and under business and community services, approval of the Library Services and Technology Act grant agreement between the State Library of Oregon and business and community services on behalf of the LINCC, which is libraries in Clackamas County. And that concludes today's consent agenda. Thank you. Uh, does any commissioner wish to remove or pull an item from the consent agenda? 
Yeah, I just want to speak on the consent agenda regarding Catholic charities, and I'm not sure if pulling the consent agenda item is the most appropriate thing to do, but I have questions regarding this particular proposal. I'm concerned about the site and it not being near public transportation. That's a question that I've been assured would be resolved if we've, as we've moved forward. And I see that we're moving forward and I don't have those questions answered. There are still also some questions I've been reaching out to veterans groups to um, hear their perspective. As a commission, we haven't heard the perspective of veterans on this particular project. I think that's important when you're looking at the site being in an industrial zone and making sure that we are doing what is appropriate for veterans when they have some specific needs regarding post-traumatic stress. So I'm not sure if polling it is appropriate. I know I've been working with staff. I know it's the will of this commission to look for a more um, appropriate space to zone a different area for transitional housing. And it's also the will of this commission to make sure that we will have transportation for mm -hmm. our transitional housing. But I don't know what the appropriate process is. My thought would be if we could pull this here and when we address the whole zoning and if we could accompany that with a board order that gives some policy direction, that would make me most comfortable at this point. But I don't know if there's any factors that I haven't considered. So uh, if I may, the, the issue about uh, the change in zoning, the, uh, uh, the follow-up to the board hearing and action on that uh, and, and final action on the ordinance, it will actually be scheduled uh, for board consideration and discussion at uh, next week's regular business mm -hmm. meeting. This particular item uh, represents an agreement between the county and Catholic Charities to make $70,000 of community development block grant dollars available so that Catholic Charities can go about the process of the engineering, architecture, planning, and study work that needs to be done to to develop the concepts further. So this is not the, this is specifically related to the site. This is really to enable okay. Catholic Charities to make their next step in the process of our uh, working relationship with them. So I hope that answers your questions for this particular pending item. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it does. I'm, I'm just not feeling comfortable moving forward without some of those questions being answered. So I'm not sure how we want to so proceed you could, with this. So you could pull the consent, you could pull it from the consent agenda for discussion, which we're having, mm -hmm. and then we could vote on the specific item, uh, or we could set a date when we could talk about it next week, but, um, so do you want to just, you, you want to pull it, that's fine. Uh, we can have further discussion now. Uh, we could vote individually on that. Uh, so, so you could you could pull it from the agenda currently now uh, and take action on the remaining items on the yeah. consent agenda in a single motion, and then consider and take up this particular item separately as a separate item today. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Or hold it for another day. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. Uh, so we're pulling that item from the consent agenda, correct? Yes, so say as amended when you make All right, the motion. so uh, entertain a motion to uh, approve the consent agenda as amended. So moved. Second. Uh, it's been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda as presented. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Carry none. Motion carries. So what do we want to do on the next item? I'd like to discuss that item, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Well, and I would propose that we schedule it concurrently next week. I have not had the opportunity to sit with Rich Swift. He wasn't available to discuss this item when we had the public hearing. I had many questions that weren't able to be answered due to the short time, and I my fellow commissioners, I'm really hearing mixed um, issue, mixed feedback from our veteran community. So I think it's important that we talk about this and we have an open process. Okay. So, Ken. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
I've spoken to veterans about this issue, and when it's fully explained, uh, what I have found is, uh, uh, generally speaking, support for it. I will acknowledge that it is not the most perfect solution for what we need, want to do. Unfortunately, it is the best solution that's available to us at this time. Uh, it is also a solution that has been uh, tried in other places successfully, so we're not reinventing the wheel. <clears throat> the previous president made a statement one time that I think applies to many things that we deal with uh, politically, and that is, is, do not let the perfect be the enemy of the good. This is not a perfect solution, but it is a good solution to help some of our veterans, and I personally don't want to see veterans on the street this winter suffering in the cold and freezing weather, or even in some cases dying because we didn't do all that we could do with those resources that we have available to us. Again, I understand it's not the perfect solution, but to do nothing is unacceptable, and we don't have the time to find and buy another piece of property and do something different than what we're currently doing. So I believe we need to move forward on this. I understand that it's not the perfect solution and that it'll be a little more difficult to get social services in that location, but I believe it's a, a workable solution and since it's been done in other locations, again, we're not reinventing the wheel. Let's get this done and make sure that people who need and want temporary housing will have it available to them this winter. Thank Paul, you, Mr. Paul. Chairman. Thank you. Paul? Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, Commissioner uh, Humberston um, echoed a lot of my concerns. Yeah, just for some reason, it doesn't sound like it's on. Is it on? How about now? They control it back there. One, two, there, yep, there we go. Okay. So, I uh, again, I'll just state that um, Commissioner Humberson uh, basically spoke to a number of the issues. Um, and I think what we've had here over the last few weeks is a little bit of confusion as to what the issues are. So the site-specific aspect, as the administrator outlined, is next week. And I would encourage anyone who has any, any questions to ask myself, staff, whoever they feel comfortable with, um, just this morning, um, from the time I walked in the fairgrounds, um, and all the way, to, all I got nothing but support for this project and from veterans themselves, um, advocates for the homeless, and and so I, I, of course, I am well versed on this, uh, but I, definitely between now and, and next Thursday, I would encourage anyone who has any questions to seek those out and um, uh, get answers to them. What we're doing here today is. Um, just a, I asked about this myself. Um, it's a seventy thousand dollars request to get the ball rolling. Um, as we can feel today, the weather's changing, and I know that this commission has been uh, trying, focused on trying to get, and staff as well, trying to get this facility up and running before the weather comes. And and the seasons are changing. We are really on a on a critical time path towards moving this forward. So um, I am happy to meet with Commissioner Fisher um, or or whatever I can do to assist to, um, to alleviate any concerns. This does not uh, address the uh, transportation issue, but I was just told here a few days ago that TriMet is going to happily accommodate uh, providing transportation to this facility. Um, and I'm also uh, of mind, too, that we can do better, and we need to do better, but we need to get the ball rolling. And, and I think uh, I don't want to see anyone freezing to death. We don't know what the weather is going to be in the winter. Uh, but we do know the rains are coming. We do know that this is an important issue, so I'm prepared to move forward today. Martha. I had an opportunity uh, yesterday to meet with our public and government relations folks uh, because I, I share uh, Commissioner Fisher's concerns. I think that there are issues, um, but I am prepared to move forward today because uh, one of my concerns was that our we had done a really great job internally with our inter interdisciplinary effort with our staff coming together across all domains to make this happen. Um, and I didn't, f and I didn't feel that we had gotten the word out in a way where where folks were comfortable with that. But after meeting with PGR yesterday and taking a look, public and government relations, and looking at um, our communication framework, um, I would be, I'm prepared today to move forward at least with this piece of it. 
the issue we have is that we have folks surrounding this particular site, just for the public record, who have concerns about it being an appropriate site because of noise, because of lack of transportation. There are other businesses around it. Nobody is against it. Uh, and as I said, it, this isn't particularly site specific, but it is giving Catholic Charities the go ahead. Um, but we are gonna have to have continued discussions about this particular area because because although it's been done in Eugene, it hasn't been done here before, and it's going to be very, very important that the folks that have concerns uh, become involved in the process and get their questions answered. So, so I will be prepared to move forward with this piece of it today, and I also want to give a shout out to our communications people who have gone out of their way to come up with a really, uh, a really excellent plan to get the word out to folks, because I think that will get uh, everybody on board in the end. So, okay. I really appreciate everyone's comments, and I so honor the commitment and the compassion of this county commission. My effort in bringing this up is the, so that we as a team create a policy that recognizes that there are certain things that we're doing that we can do better and that we put in a board order that we are committed to doing better and some of the key areas are of course transportation and Commissioner Savas I'm very pleased to hear that TriMet has committed to provide transportation to the site because that has been an open issue in my mind so that's that's really good I'm also pleased that amongst our staff and the, our fellow commissioners that I have heard that we are committed to finding other location oh, yeah. for transitional housing and that we are going to do that. What I would like to propose is that we do that in a board order and I've been working with um, Stephen Madcor about what is possible to be in a board order. I've been working with my policy coordinator to do that. I would like us to um, have that along with moving forward with this project. I'm okay, I'm not at all interested in stopping this very important project. It is of the utmost importance that we do whatever we can to address the needs of people in our community. But I do want us to um, be mindful of really letting the community know through our policy where we intend to go in the future. Okay. Um, right, and and just to add, uh, you know, I I agree that we can do better. I just don't think we can do better that quick. I mean, right. any any investments in this site should be limited uh, and movable uh, as much as possible. But uh, you know, no matter where we put the tiny homes, it's not good enough. We can do better, and you know. And that's going to take some specific uh, direction uh, where we spend money uh, in the future when we get money. How are we going to invest that to make sure that we address the homelessness issue in Clackamas County? So, uh, but I guess from here I'd entertain a motion. Um, Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Wait. Well, let him make the motion. Okay. Go He's ahead. going to. Um, I, I just had um, oh. one more comment to make, and then I'd be happy to make a motion on this, Mr. Chairman. I would just like, simply like to point out something that you have four basic districts in the county. You have rural, residential, commercial, and and um, and uh, industrial. I would challenge anybody in this room to show me a residential community that will that will accept 30 homeless men in their community next to their house. I will challenge anybody in this room to show me a commercial area that ha is dependent upon retail traffic for their business that will accept 30 homeless men in their neck of the woods. I will challenge anybody to show me a rural area that would be more convenient than an industrial area that can provide the social services and transportation services that are necessary. So in the final analysis, at a practical level, this is the solution that is available to us. The need is now, and it needs to be taken care of as quickly as possible. 
On that note, Mr. Chairman, I would move that we approve the cooperation agreement with Catholic Charities and the Housing and Community Development Division for Homeless Veterans Shelter pre-development activities. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve, I've uh, got to find it, repeat it back. Oh, approve the cooperation agreement with Catholic Charities and the Housing Community Development Division for Homeless Vets Shelter pre-development, pre-development. Further discussion? Yeah, just, just one comment. I think the main reason why I have been so outspoken on this issue is just based on what Commissioner Humberston said, which is sensitive and difficult to discuss. But Commissioner Humberston is right. There probably aren't communities that would welcome people who are homeless to help them. But we as a board of county commissioners are leaders. We are leaders in our community. And it hurts us to legitimize people living in places that are not meant for people to live in. For us to set a policy that it's only in industrial zones that we are going to put transitional housing, that hurts us as a community, it hurts us as a commission. And we, as the leaders of our community, need to say we need to look beyond industrial zones so that we can find solutions for some of our most vulnerable people that live in our communities. So given that, um, I'm going to go ahead and vote for this with the qualification that we are going to be committed in moving forward in a way that looks beyond <laughs> industrial zones and looks at the individual needs of the people that we represent. And I'll be happy to support that. Thank you. But I want to get it done. I want to get it done, too. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Harry none. Motion carries. Thank you. The next oh. item is uh, county administrator updates. Nice shirt. By the <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I've got a couple of items of good news to share with you. One is that we just got an excellent update uh, from our health centers, uh, which are operated by our Health, Housing, and Human Services Department. Uh, the dental team at our Beaver Creek uh, Health and Wellness Center hosted a clinic this past Saturday where children received free dental sealants and a bag of school supplies. So uh, the dental sealants, if you don't know, they're a, a kind of a thin plastic coating that are painted and then hardened on the back permanent uh, molars, and they can prevent up to 90% of decay in teeth. It's quick and it's painless, and our patients uh, left with bright, healthy smiles to start the school year. Uh, so our uh, Beaver Creek Health Clinic is going to host this very same event on August the 26th, which is a week from this Saturday, and I would invite anyone who uh, wishes to take advantage of that opportunity to do so. The other item I have is uh, with uh, regards to our Water Environment Services Department, our Rock Creek Confluence Project. It's now complete. Uh, this project was began in uh, 2014 and it included uh, extensive restoration efforts. Uh, Water Environment Services, the Clackamas uh, River Basin Council, and other partners work to improve water quality and wildlife habitat along a 2,000 foot section uh, of the creek leading to the Clackamas River. Uh, really nifty stuff. Uh, the site uh, now has an outdoor classroom shelter with tables and an area that hosted its first group of students studying stream respiration this uh, past Tuesday. Really nifty. I uh, have one other item. I've shared this before. I'm going to share it one more time um, before Monday because, as we all know, a rare and historic solar eclipse uh, will occur in a matter of days. And suddenly, as I put this on, I can't see anything. Uh, I guess I could look up at the sun and I can see the sun there. It's, it's there. I want to encourage everybody and anyone who is uh, going to be observing the solar eclipse to uh, get one of these glasses and, in fact, our uh, County Tourism and Cultural Affairs Department, they're here at the County Fair, and you can get a free pair of solar eclipse uh, glasses uh, right here. They're uh, situated just behind the doors here in this building. 
Uh, so this is going to be a once-in-a-lifetime celestial spectacle. We're expecting maybe as many as a million visitors who are uh, uh, traveling through uh, uh, Clackamas County and other parts of Oregon. So, uh, if you want more information, uh, we have a web page up and running on it, www.clackamas.us forward slash eclipse. So, thank you. Don, you really look great today. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right. Well, next up, our Commissioner uh, Communications, and we start with Ken. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll make my um, Remarks fairly brief today. First, I, I would like to thank the Fair Board and the Rodeo Committee for some incredible work that they have been doing. Um, as you probably have seen if you've been to the rodeo, they rebuilt the announcer's stand. $20,000 was donated from Canby Builders. $5,000 was donated from an unknown anonymous donor. And thousands of volunteer labor hours were spent to rebuild that facility. That is symbolic of what always goes on here with the fair board, its friends, and the rodeo board, and their friends. Incredible amounts of volunteer hours to make this place function and to have the kind of events that we all enjoy here. Secondly, they, um, we were able to help out a little bit with some money to repair the wooden stands at the rodeo arena so that they would be safe at least for the next four or five years before we get a chance to do some rebuilding work on those. And then finally, I had the privilege of um, being Martha's understudy with a, a Chinese contingent of folks from our sister county in Guanyang, China, who are interested in investing uh, some money and uh, possibly providing some employment opportunities for folks here in Clackamas County and are encouraging our businesses to take a look at their county for some um, uh, business opportunities there. And lastly, uh, I had the privilege of representing our county in a meeting with the Consul General of China whose headquarters are in San Francisco and who graciously came up here to Clackamas County and to this region to uh, gi uh, give a talk about cooperation and working together between China and Clackamas County and our metro region. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Fisher. I just want to celebrate the fair. Isn't this fun? It has been a great time. I've met so many people. I have had so many wonderful discussions. I've <coughs> Um, I don't know if everybody's had the chance to get back and look at all the beautiful bouquets and the flowers, but yesterday was my daughter's birthday and she loves flowers. I was taking pictures of flowers and sending to her, sending her them over text message, just having a wonderful talk, talking with our master gardeners. Really, this is a community fair. This is our community coming together sharing, connecting, and everybody's so happy, everybody's friendly. This is where you put your troubles out there, you come in here and you celebrate, and it's just been wonderful. Great, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Schrader. Well, great, I, I have two things to do. First of all, I do wanna thank uh, uh, Commissioner Humbertson for kind of being the under, understudy. I don't think you really were the understudy. I think you were just the right person. <laughs> For the job as they came in and I want to thank co my colleagues because I did have an opportunity to meet them in San Francisco and have dinner with them and um, that was that was kind of fascinating and they did something very nice the the Chinese delegation I know that they gave us each um, they, the Chinese have this uh, uh, you know, process of giving gifts to people who they visit so what they gave me was this Chinese uh, symbol of all happiness and what they said to me was well we know the reason you're not going to be um, seeing us in Oregon um, is because you're going to be at your daughter's wedding and we wanted to you to make sure that this is what you gave us from us so at some point here in the near future you'll see pictures of my daughter's weddings posted I accidentally tagged John uh, uh, Don I was just trying to share it with you but I don't do the internet really yet well so you're tagged on that Don but anyway <laughs> there you that. go um, I'm not sure what that meant but I hope it was a good thing um, anyway uh, I um, I was delighted to do that uh, I also want to thank Commissioner Fisher actually for her uh, 
her courage and her ability to move us ahead with a, this project and really make us uh, ask the tough questions that need need to be uh, need to be asked. I, I really I really appreciate it. It it has made me stop and rethink. And as I said, I think I think that. Um, Hopefully, the public process that we're we're kind of working with uh, will will help solve some of the questions and the issues that we have out there. But thank you so much um, for you really doing your due diligence as my fellow commissioner. I love working with you. I um, love working with you too. <laughs> I know. The other thing is that um, this was the first opening of the fair that I've missed since 2003. And again, it was because I had to go to uh, my daughter's wedding. Uh, in true Oregonian fashion, she got married on a farm in New Hampshire, not in Oregon, but in New Hampshire. Um, my daughter was beautiful. Her husband was handsome. The bridesmaids took me under their wing and uh, took good care of me as the mom of the bride. And... Um, I, I am just so grateful to have my family and my children. I'm grateful to be back here in Oregon for work again. And again, thanks to my commissioners for covering for me when, when I got to go to uh, the wedding, which happened to be on my birthday, of all things, as well. So it was kind of a double, uh, a double gift to me. So with that, I'll hand it over. Okay. Commissioner Savas. Yeah, well, um, I kind of mentioned earlier, this is my really my favorite meeting of the year and uh, favorite week of the year uh, with regards to um, seeing uh, a lot of my community members from around the county. It's a great opportunity to connect with a lot of folks. Um, it's very rewarding to see folks, whether it's the rodeo committee or the fair board members or volunteers here. Um, everyone so excited, the 4-H, the um, everyone so excited about this event, um, their volunteering makes this happen. Without them, we would not have this fair. Uh, of course, we always look to the, to the big white tent in front of us uh, every time we've had these here at the fair, these meetings, and I'm, we're hoping that we can have in the future some permanent facility. I heard a lot of excitement yesterday for some of the board members about feeling as though there's some progress towards that end. Uh, but this, I, I think, again, this is a sense of a community and a, and a great opportunity for people to connect. And I just really want to say thank you to each and every volunteer, the fair board members, the rodeo members, everyone involved here, staff, that makes this happen. This is a fantastic uh, team effort on behalf of Clackamas County, and I'm just proud to be a county commissioner. Thank you. Great. Thank you. And uh, yesterday, Paul and I had an opportunity to meet and greet senior citizens get cookies and coffee. Uh, it was hosted by Warner Grange, and they dropped off some cookies over here. Uh, actually, it was hosted by the Grange. Uh, they dropped off some cookies over here, and thank you for bringing those. Uh, it was great to hear from you know many of the senior citizens around. In the past, we've served ice cream, uh, which was, was great, too. I uh, want to talk a little bit about how we could... <laughs> Uh, interact a little more like we did with the ice cream maybe next year. Maybe Paul and I and the rest of us can give out cookies, uh, help volunteer and give out cookies. It was a lot of fun. Um, you know, also this event, like Paul and everyone else has said, wouldn't happen if it weren't for the uh, hundreds and perhaps thousands of hours of volunteer work that goes into this. And that includes the rodeo. Had an opportunity to sit down with a couple of very handsome rodeo, uh, I, I, what do you call those guys? Uh, cowboys? cowboys. Cowboys. Oh, that's it. <laughs> cowboys. Yeah. You got three cows, you don't know what a cowboy you don't is? Know what a cowboy? <laughs> you live in Clackamas County? <laughs> yes, see what I have to put up with. Okay. Um, anyway, I also, I, I thought the 4 H presentation was really outstanding. I mean, uh, I, I was born and raised in Milwaukee, and I, they may have had a 4-H group, but I never knew about it, and I would have loved that opportunity to do that. And, and I live in, uh, just outside of Canby, and my family's from, from, the fa from farms out of McMinnville and St. Paul and Faribault and then uh, Holland. So uh, it's great to be back on the farm uh, doing what... Uh, we did many centuries ago, and I have many relatives still in the farming business 
uh, in Oregon. So uh, I really appreciate and, and think we need a mentor. I need a mentor uh, to help me figure out how to deal with those cows. First thing I never knew is cows don't bite. And so I was worried that the cow was going to bite me and found out that they don't bite, they kick. But I've never seen the cow kick, but it does headbutt. <laughs> anyway, so uh, thank you all very much. And it was uh, actually, I want to compliment uh, Commissioner Fisher. I at first thought, you know, maybe this wasn't the place to have that discussion and decided that this is the perfect place, place to have that discussion. And I uh, appreciate you bringing that up. And, uh, you know, you're absolutely right. We can do a lot better. And we probably should have done this 10 years ago, and we wouldn't have this problem. But it's not just us. Uh, obviously, homelessness in the country is really growing. And uh, after coming through a bad economic time and uh, a lot of people you know, losing their homes and continue to lose their homes or rent prices continue to climb, we need to make sure we address that issue as county, county commissioners, clowny commissioners. So, uh, so you got that right the first time. <laughs> so thank you all very much. And with that, we're adjourned.